sharp wit will serve you better. If you're to bargain with the lady of this house. I don't want a crumb left on that plate, girl. Auntie Ethel, please. Call me Mazora. I'm Will's patron, the fount of his power. I'm a hunter who lost his prey, and here I am seeking help from something worse. Gods, grant me patience. Eat up, Mayrina. I won't say it again. What the hells have you done? A promise broken, a price paid. And you, my door is always open, Petal. Auntie Ethel is here for you. Hello there, troops. We are back at it with another episode of Baldur's Gate 3, and you're watching Ace of Space Gaming with your host for the day and the weekend, Massive Thumbs. Now, troops, I hope you caught the last episode, but before I go on to try and recap it, I highly suggest that you skip the recap because, well, I tend to go on, and I don't mean it, but it's just a thing now. <laughs> so if you do, skip the intro slash recap. Then I shall see you at the actual start of the video, and if not, then we'll have fun listening to me go on. Anyway, at the start of the last episode, we kind of started off in camp. We gave Gale his first artifact, and uh, we spoke to Volo briefly. He's trying to find a way to get the tadpole out of her eye. I don't know if I'm going to go through with that, but it was funny nonetheless. <laughs> on to the important things. We went back to... I don't remember the area's name. But we went to go get revenge for Car Carlac and those pesky paladins. A group of people basically, I think, masquerading as paladins of Tyr and they were supposed to, or they asked you to take Carlac out. Which, obviously, we did not do. So we took out the, pa the paladins because they wanted to take Carlac back to Avernus. Carlac didn't like that one bit. So we took them out. And then once we took them out, Carlac raged and burnt down the whole place. And then we found out that she has an infernal engine for a heart. So that's why she kind of burns up a lot. <laughs> so she needs to find a mechanic for her heart. And there might be one, a tiefling, at the grove that can help us. So we're going to go look for a tiefling that might be able to help Carlac at some point in the playthrough. Probably soon. <laughs> and then we went to Joachim's rest where the place was still burning. We heard that the goblins raided it from the goblins themselves. So we saved that one guy and Councillor Floric from the blaze of the burning building. But it was when we saved Floric that we found out a wee bit more about Will. And we actually found out that he's just the son of a grand duke. Like, he's not just this random The Blade of Frontiers hero of the Sword Coast. No, he's literally the son of the Grand Duke of Baldur's Gate. So he's a pretty important guy. <laughs> and it also turns out something has happened between them. He hasn't told us that, and I don't think he will before <laughs> before he leaves our com company. That basically he wanted to kind of forget that life. I don't know. I'll go more into Will's story and Carlac's story during the playthrough when we don't have them anymore. <laughs> and uh, Floric told us that the Grand Duke... Older Ravenguard has been taken by the drow. Taken probably to Moonrise because that's where the goblins are taking all of their prisoners. So we've been told. So a lot's happening at Moonrise. Will wants to save his dad, of course. And we said we'd help, but again, might not have Will along for that journey. And then at the very end, we recruited some trolls. And they're our best friends now. <laughs> and we helped save Auntie Ethel from some thugs who said that she had their sister. And it turns out we killed them and she does know their sister. So we're, we def and she just popped out, like just dis disappeared into thin air. So Auntie Ethel isn't just this wee innocent old woman. And it's great. Perhaps today we'll go and find Auntie Ethel's cottage in the swamps or that area. I don't know if it's a swamp quite yet. But anyway, that was last week's episode. Uh, probably other things happened, but honestly, I just want to jump into today's video. <laughs> I'm starting off terribly by being absolutely tired, but I know as soon as I see Grosha's little tiny face, <laughs> then it, it'll wake me up, bring me back to life. So, 
I think I mentioned last week that I wanted to go talk. Uh, I wanted to find an animal, uh, a portion of animal speaking, because uh, I wanted to go talk to a dog. Because uh, I wanted to go see a dog. I don't know. We might go see any ethel. Honestly, I'm not a hundred percent on what we're doing today. But that's all part of the fun. There's still so much for us to do, so much to see. You're gonna have to join me if you want to find out what we're doing in today's episode of Baldur's Gate 3. So Trips, I'm gonna shut up and we're actually gonna fire up the game and see what kind of trouble my dark orge half-orc grocer can get up to. So without further ado, Trips, let's go! Okay, I think we're just uh, gonna short rest. Better than nothing. Cause I'm gonna need to long rest. <laughs> Start long resting a lot more. But you know, I feel like I keep forgetting to actually talk to these people, my little companions, when we're rooting about. So I don't know. I'm gonna have a little chat with them, see what, if anyone's got anything to say. Carlax all fire and fury. I pray to the triad it doesn't consume her. Oh, isn't that nice of him to see? Now, we'll ask him more about stuff back at camp. I just wanted to see if any of them had things to say. But I see we're talking about Carlac. I thought maybe they would have mentioned Will being a Grand Duke's son. Carlac's temper is a sight to behold. <laughs> She'll need to be careful. That rage will burn her right out. It almost burnt me right out. <laughs> Copper for your thoughts. You don't have anything to say. That's absolutely fine. Wow, there's a lot to talk to Carl like about. Eleven? Wow, I don't think I've ever seen that many before. Okay, so we definitely have a lot to say to Carl like at some point. Dreaming red. Okay, Grosha. You're very dramatic. <laughs> We already checked these guys, don't we? What's hiding here? There's a little secret about this. Uh, do you call this a swamp still? Oh, it's lovely though. I don't know. But there's a lovely little secret about this place. And I know it's a perception check, isn't it? I've never failed it. So I don't know what happens if you fail it. Let's see, shall we? Oh no. It still happens. A chill runs up okay. your spine. You feel like you're being watched. Never mind. Oh no, okay, so... Oh, fuck. <laughs> Wait, so what happens if you ignore it? I've never ignored it. We're gonna try. If I fail, I'm not using inspiration for it. <laughs> well, looks are so scared! <laughs> okay, look for anything out of the ordinary. Let's see if we get lucky on our... Fuck, that's a 20. <laughs> Yeah, I don't see that. I don't see us getting lucky for this one. But <laughs> and <laughs> Grosha has zero intelligence. Minus one in fucking intelligence. She got no thoughts. Nah. And I, I really don't uh, want to use inspiration for that. So we're just gonna continue and see how this goes. The place has a quiet sense of calm. You can't see anything strange. Oh, that is so strange. Okay. All right. So, okay, so it just stays like this. Wow. Is there any way to make that change? Do the traps appear? So. Someone. Tra fucking stay still. Because no these waste. things cause you to bleed. And I can't be fucked with that. Okay. <laughs> nice. Couldn't have given me a better roll. Like, maybe I should have made Shadowheart walk into the swamp first. That was a weird noise. Looking ahead. Is there other traps? I think there is. Um. So there's something through here that I want to go get? But I don't know if I want to risk. You know what? Maybe I can make Shadow Heart take the lead. I'm ready. Whatever it takes, I must keep going. How nice is the water? Oh, it's called the Sunlit Wetlands. Okay. <laughs> All right. No longer a swamp, I see. Okay. 
I could have swore there was something else though. Or otherwise, I would not have wasted my time. <laughs> okay. I know we're li literally like right here. Please don't Watch set yourself. traps off. Thank you. Trap. No one. What's next? Uh, you, Shadow Heart, hopefully disarming. Oh my fucking god, Shadow Heart! This way. Look at the <gasps> amount of bleeding that just got caused from that. You are so Hurting. fucking annoying. And they're Amen. gonna be in a lot of pain until that all wears off. I was wanting to read this later, but then they all got caught in a trap that she was supposed to disarm. <laughs> Take a breather, lovelies, and have a bite on me. I, I can never do an Irish accent. It's so... I wish I could. I love it. Or I wish I could sound like any of though at least. 25, are you taking the piss? Rotting. Oh. Don't be shy. <sighs> that didn't work. Okay, so I just wasted a healing potion on nothing. How do you get rid of rotten? Diseased. Have you got... Way to go still. Uh... Creature from disease, there you go. Thank you. Now we have to waste another spell slot to heal well. Well, I didn't need to, but he could have, like... Okay, I don't know. Something could have happened, I guess. <laughs> Oh my god, they're sheep! Okay. <laughs> you know what? Having this be a sheep makes Act 3 make a bit more sense now, right? Does the sheep say anything? Other than. The sheep's voice warbles. You realize it's trying to say bar. Trying to say bar. Drop your ass and carefully reach out. Do I have any animal handling? Is it going to attack me if I fail this roll? Please don't get attacked by random sheep. Are they really sheep though? Oh nice, thank you. Get all the good rolls out the way early. <laughs> the smell of rot oh. assaults your senses as the illusion vanishes. Knew it happens. I see. So the animal handling helped, and not my investigation skills. Not really a sunlit wetlands. A diminutive creature sporting a red hat <laughs> glares at you. He seems unaware that his illusion has failed. <laughs> I kind of prefer these lands as the sunlit wetlands because it looks a lot nicer, but there you have it. It was all an illusion, my friends. <laughs> But we're not gonna tell him he's not a sheep. He done a great job as a sheep. We're gonna buy. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Oh, but she got inspiration from that. And these are always oh, just poison apples. I don't know why I check. And no, the place looks horrible. <laughs> As I said, kind of preferred it. Let me know what you think. Do you prefer the sunlit wetlands or do you prefer the swamp? <laughs> I didn't know. I've always passed that check, so they've always been red caps. So I guess I've always wondered why they bad. <laughs> but now I know why they tried to sound like sheep. Because they were supposed to appear as sheep. No, I'll just get up there. Try not to trigger traps. There's a rabbit over there. There's not a rabbit. <laughs> There's a frog over there. We're going to talk to that at some point. But again, I need uh, to be able to communicate with animals. And here is old Auntie Ethel's cottage. But before we do that, there's someone over here that I want to talk to. Oh, yeah. I forgot there was a waypoint here. Oh, no. Wait. Should we? Should I? Go speak with him. Yeah, we're gonna talk to him. See what he has to say. Maybe he has a potion, actually. Ah, a fellow wanderer. 
Forgive the uh, aroma. <laughs> you catch a waft of something foul, metallic, and sickly sweet. Powdered iron vine. Most monsters will think twice before making a meal of me. An old hunter's trick. If you can't mask your scent, spoil it. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't like to walk about stinking, but it's a good method. A monster hunter, what are you doing in these parts, Gandrel? I prefer a weapon to a stench. Thanks. <laughs> I feel like maybe Grosha would prefer a weapon to a stench. Yeah, I think Grosha's gonna go for that. Sharp steel is not proof against all the monsters of this world, my friend. A sharp wit will serve you better if you're to bargain with the lady of this house. That is why you came to her lair, I take it. Her to lair? Bargain. Who do you mean her lair? <laughs> it's a tea house, hardly a lair. <laughs> also, Gr uh, Grosha has no wisdom. That's why she prefers blunt blades. Sharp blades, blunt actions. <laughs> Not at all, I was invited for tea. Technically we were. Hmm. Let's ask him. We're gonna ask Lady of the House? What do you mean? A more innocent name than some I could call her. Huh? But it is what she is that ought to concern you. Her kind have hidden among us since the first darkness. And their knowledge is matched only by their spite. Know how to ask and they'll share that knowledge. If you're fool enough to pay their price. And boy, is there always a price. Speak plainly. What is she? I feel like Grosha would get uh, impatient and be like, just stop with your fancy words and just say it straight. <laughs> and are you fool enough? Ooh. Yeah. I'm going to ask that. We're going to ask if he is a fool. <laughs> of course. I'm a <laughs> hunter who lost his prey. And here I am seeking help from something worse. But she thrives on suffering. Once she hears what awaits my quarry when I catch him, she will help. Oh, you think? Paladin, ooh, I'd advise against helping such a creature thrive. What quarry could be worth that price? Ooh, I like that answer. Again, can I ask who you're hunting and then come back to the paladin thing? Well, I guess maybe not. I'm kind of, uh, kind of want to go for the paladin answer. We haven't went down a lot of paladin routes because of the whole dodge thing, so we're gonna say that. Yeah, just go for it. Truth is like a blade, my friend. We can arm ourselves with it, or just as easily find it pressed against our throat. I would not put you in danger. Oh, you're one of the guys, right? Got it. <laughs> Your kindness is getting boring. Maybe we can help with the hunt. We're going to offer to help with his hunt. You're going to love this answer. Like who he's actually hunting. I bet you'll never guess. <laughs> oh, nice. No, this duty is mine alone. But for such an offer, an answer at least is owed. I hunt a vampire spawn called Astarian. Whoa. I'm bound to bring him back to Baldur's Gate. Alive. What do you Though mean? Though I cannot swear to his condition once my tribe are done with him. Is he known to you? Well, we do know someone called Astarian. But he definitely isn't a vampire, right? You can give up your hunt. Astarian's under my protection, which he is. But as of right now, I don't want to attack him. Do we tell him we know an Astarian, but he's not a vampire? Or do we ask what his tribe wants with a creature like that? Maybe we'll ask that. See why they're hunting a vampire. My people were recently attacked in the night. Our camp set upon by a band of vampire spawn. In the chaos of battle, one of them stole away with our children. We've been searching for them ever since. We believe this Astarian knows exactly what happened that night and where to find our little ones. If captured, my people will make him talk. So I ask again. Is he known to you? You're trying to... T I love that Grosha's like, Whoa, that can't be my Astarian, right? <laughs> so you're trying to tell me that Astarian is a vampire and stole children? I don't believe it. Come and let me know if you believe it. Would Astarian do such a thing? I'm going to say I know him, but he ain't a vampire. See what he says. I'm willing to kill this guy, if that's what it takes. 
So you have met him. His kind have charm beyond our mortal means to resist. <laughs> but you're right. He's no true vampire. No. Not yet. I don't suppose you'll tell me where he is. No. Tell him how to find your camp. No, we're not gonna do that. I mean, obviously we're gonna go for we don't know where he is because I'm not actually going to let him take a stallion. I just wanted you to find out this little piece of information. As you say, then I must redouble my efforts and pray my delay costs no more lives. Yeah, you do. Gendril. You're the worst vampire monster hunter I've ever met. He's not. But he's not doing a great job in finding a stallion. But anyway, no, we've dealt with the, va the monster hunter. We're gonna go see an Aetho and see what is happening with her. Who is Marina and does she really know her? Only time will tell. Hello, Auntie Ethel! Hello! I don't want a crumb left on that plate, girl. Auntie Ethel, please. One more bite and this pie is gonna come back up to say hello. Don't make me get the wooden spoon. You're eating for two, so get to it. Oh, if it isn't my hero. You took ages. Come in, come in. Feel free to relax yourself and have a cuppa. Mm -hmm. I actually love tea. <laughs> Gods grant me patience. Eat up, Marina. I won't say it again. Oh. She doesn't look like the little sweet old, old lady we saw outside, does she? Mm mm. Not one bit. Okay. So that's Marina, huh? We have some bad news for her. We slaughtered your fuck your kin. <laughs> I'm gonna. We're not gonna ask about Marina because I don't want to anger Ethel right now. But don't worry. We will be helping Marina at some point. We're just gonna see. That we're glad she got here safely. Hopefully, she'll be nice to us. <laughs> Thanks to you. Yeah. You know, you're lucky. You've helped a very powerful lady. People in dire need travel from all over Faerun to see little old me. <laughs> and I do my damnedest to help them. Do you? And you, Petal. Well, you need a lot of help. Yeah, she do. That wriggler swimming in your brain juice is a bit of an inconvenience, isn't it? Inconvenient. <laughs> Being infested with a tadpole is a little more than inconvenient. Ethel. Sometimes I just love looking at how angry Grosha is. We can still ask about Marina. I feel like she's very ignorant. Not asking about it, but... <laughs> We're just going to keep talking to her like that woman isn't in the background there. <laughs> I kind of, why are you not acknowledging that you have spoke before? She knows because, did we not tell her about the tadpole? We're going to ask how she knows anyway. Because you stink. <laughs> Rude. And I know the stench of mind flare anywhere. How? I can tell you're almost done cooking. You know, you could turn just like that. What do you say? Want me to take care of the little bugger? It would be fucking grand if you actually could. <laughs> well, we can tell it about Raphael. Imagine they actually got, like, could remove the tadpole in Act 1. Boom. Game done. <laughs> World destroyed. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna tell it about Raphael's offer. A devil? <laughs> Spare me. <laughs> Blathering windbags in love with the sound of their own voices. Yeah. I'm the safer bet. Plus, you'll get to keep your soul. Yeah, but what do you want in return? I don't know if I quite trust you either, Auntie Ethel. Depending on the price, we're just going to go for that. Because that guy outside said that if you're willing to pay the price, you can help. But that doesn't mean it's going to just be like 10 gold and boom, you're helping. <laughs> That depends on the job. <laughs> a removing a parasite is no small feat. But I like you, Petal. Aww. So <laughs> I'll only ask for something small. One of your pretty little peepers. <laughs> An eyeball. I pluck it from your head. 
kiss it for luck. Then back in it goes. Won't take but a moment. That is my price. Nothing more, nothing less. You want my eyeball? Yeah, why do, you, why do you want a bloody eyeball? I love, I just remembered. <laughs> this is the part where she's like, you've got two now, don't be precious. <laughs> I love her so much. I apologize for my also terrible impre impression of an Ethel. We're going to ask her why. I don't, is it like for a spell or something? I can't remember. I've never actually took her up on our deal before. Because... Well, between her and Volo, we'd have no bloody eyes left. <laughs> but we're going to ask her why anyway. I'm afraid that's my business, Petal. Oh, you're one of It's nothing one. nefarious, though. I promise. Okay. Do we trust that? Wait, so, like, would that impact Act 3, then? If you got her eye? Or got her to mess about with your eye? I don't know. Oh yeah, we're gonna ask if her eyesight will be damaged. There probably is something that happens with that, right? A touch, but sure, you have two <laughs> eyes in your skull, don't you? No need to be precious. <laughs> that is so good. <laughs> She's just like, yeah, but you've got two. You don't need them both. Don't be greedy. <laughs> uh, like, God forbid you want 2020 vision, right? But I'm not gonna go for it. Not right now. I'm quite sure we can come back to it if we change our mind. Kinda like Raphael. Nope. And kinda like um Volo and how you don't need to accept the deal but you can go back to it. So I'm um, just gonna click on leave. Oh no. We're gonna click well, I'm gonna go through the trading process and see if she's got anything useful. And then I'm just gonna click leave. She did not have anything worth buying. Ethel, can I please Quiet, you've had enough pampering Oh. And you, my door is always open, Petal. Aunt Yettle is here for you. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, there you have it. Little old Auntie Ethel. Little tiny cute lady, but <laughs> harboring a prisoner. It didn't. Like, she said uh, last week, I think, that Marina wanted her help with something. What the fuck is that? Has that always been like that? Is that new? I have never noticed this before. Can I get back here? Not without pissing off Annie Ethel. Okay. But yeah. Uh, I think I was saying something about how Marina was here for help. But it didn't look like she was being helped, to be honest. But, as I said, we'll be dealing with that later because I don't need to deal with that right now. Right now? Perhaps right now I could go find some infernal iron. Which I technically don't need to do right now. But I could. Okay, I have a couple of things to do here. Before, uh... Wait. Yeah. We're gonna go up this way. And then we'll go to that cave. Because going into that cave then triggers something at the goblin camp as well. Which I really want to trigger. Um, hello? <gasps> Thank you, I thought I missed him. Um, we're gonna go get him before he disappears. I do not have a potion of animal speaking, so I'm just gonna hope and pray that this goes well. <laughs> I really don't want it to mess up. Hi, bud. How you doing? Are you okay? Oh. He may not want to be petted, but we're going to try and pet him, see if he's okay. Not a fan. Oh, he mad. <laughs> I have int intimidation, but we're not going to do that. Um, perception. I don't have any of them. We're going to peer at his collar. Ten. Could it be worse? Come on, give me that three, boy! <laughs> nice! No wasted inspiration today. Well, not right now, at least. You see a name etched into the leather. Scratch. Oh, little scratch. 
Look at the way she's looking at him, man. Like, she looks like she wants to eat him. <laughs> We're gonna say his name. Maybe that will calm him down, hopefully. See, we know. Aww. You're all right, Scratch. You're okay. You can come with me. Your order is dead. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> With a deep, heartbroken whine, Aww. the dog bows his head. Oh, he's sad. <laughs> oh, we can. Can we pet him? If I pet him, can I still tell him to come with me? We're gonna tell him. Oh, I wanna do both. <laughs> what if I can't do both? <laughs> this is so crucial. I cannot miss having Scratch in my life. Leave him to his sorrow? No, we would never do that. We're gonna ask him to come with us and then hopefully we get to pat him. Pet him. Uh, he whines, <laughs> Come but on. remains rooted by the corpse's side. Oh. No, oh, we're gonna hold out our hand. I also just wanna pet him. <laughs> but we're gonna hold out our hand. Hopefully, he can follow us to camp. <laughs> Don't you worry, we're gonna be best buds. Can I go back to him and pet him, please? Oh, I'm sorry you're sad. Yeah, we can pet him. You're okay, bud. You can just come find us when you're ready. Oh. No, we're gonna leave him to his sorrow. I feel so bad. Okay, you had lots of letters. A tough letter, soft letter, and personal. What are you, Goldilocks in the three letters? <laughs> oh, nine fingers. I won't come back to the city. Not while you have your thugs looking for me. If you want the debt paid, you have to trust me and collect it yourself. Go to the graveyard and look where uh, M. Corwin is buried. Get digging and you'll find enough valuables to settle matters between us. Don't go looking for me. I know when I'm safe. Then I'm quite sure that gives you like a wee thing to do in Baldur's Gate, right? Davin, it's a boy! Oh, he's healthy and perfect. I've named him after his father. Come back and see us as soon as you can get leave. Love, Flora. And Davin Jr. Oh. Gomwick, be doubly careful on the way back to Baldur's Gate. I've received more reports of attacks on travellers throughout the region. I can't have my best messenger winding up face down in a ditch somewhere. Watch yourself. Better late than never. He's face down in a ditch. <laughs> you failed. But that's fine, because I got Scratch. My best friend. Okay, then I think maybe we will go back to the cave. No, I'd like to have an animal speaking potion for that, actually. But I think we're going to go find some... um. Infernal iron, some metals, skip a certain point of Carlex thing, and then we'll go try and find uh, the infernal mechanic. Okay, so we're gonna be going in here to the shabby wooden doors, or hopefully we can break into the shabby wooden doors. I'm quite sure you can get in through here though, right? But anyway. This is a kind of a step on Carlac Carlac's mission, but can we just get in? Oh, nice! We had the key. But it's also a case of like you can just do this no matter what. You don't need to do it as part of Cal Carlac's mission. It just can help with her mission. Is this our first cave? No, the Dark Soldier. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to click on you right now. But uh, this might be our first uh, spelunking expedition <laughs> in the playthrough. I don't remember. Oh, I forgot. This is where you can make the susar weapon, right? With susar bark. Lots of tool yeah, disarming kits. Trap. Something. These things. Thief tools. <laughs> I totally forgot the name of them there. <laughs> Weapon blueprints. They call for Susabark. 
There's only one place I'm finding the Susa tree. The Underdark. The Underdark. I love the Underdark. The lighting is great. It's just, it is stunning. The lighting isn't always great, but the, the place itself it just looks beautiful. By the flick of the wrist. Well, shite. We have lots of thieves' tools. I gotta use one. Yeah, there we go. And there we have it. Some infernal iron. I actually forgot it was in this box. Metal. Very hard. Unknown. Silver. <laughs> Source underdark. Faintly sulfuric odor. Forging unsuccessful. Will not melt or warp at standard temperature. Infernal metal. That's what my engine's made of. Hang on to that. Don't you worry, Carl, like we will. As I mentioned, well, we read about the Susar bark. And that's what you need to create a decent enough weapon, but honestly, I've never really had a playthrough where the Susar bark weapon is useful or worth it. But, I mean, other people might think it's a lot more useful than I do, so just because I don't think it's useful doesn't mean it's not worth trying to get, you know? Do I need to pass a check? I do! Why is it red? Am I gonna... Is that a crime? <laughs> yeah. Aha! Uh, this is a cave I'm not a big fan of. Keep clear of the webs. And the spiders might not notice us. See, that's exactly why, because it's essentially a spider cave. And I was thinking about not doing it, but it's a decent XP, isn't it? XP is XP! Is there a way for me to get. There is no other way for me to get over there other than bloody using this, and I've never found a way to get over this webbing without <laughs> getting caught in it. Does crouching help? Can you jump? Oh, she, we can maybe jump it, but I don't know about the rest of them. Shadowheart, you might need a potion. Shadowheart. Oh, She's already missing a level two spell slot. Hmm, that's not good. Do I want to risk taking on this cave? If we're already missing spell slots. Oh, I could go for a good meal. You're alright. Wretched thing. Pull yourself together. Well, you're okay. Can I heal Sh Shadowheart? Okay, there we go. Healed. Karlak, don't you dare think about moving. Why are you. Is that on the webs? Not for fuck! Something didn't like that. Yeah. Can you grab? If everyone else minds their business, I'll be fine. I fucking hate this place. <laughs> and they're not just. They're not just spiders. They're not just normal spiders! I hear noises. Okay. Don't burn yourself. I'll fucking try not to. Again with the bloody... Uh. Sorry, Karlak, but I really need you to not... get caught. Let's get on with it. Okay. Is... To keep low. crouching... helpful? Better tread carefully. Come on, Shadowheart. You can do this. <laughs> Thank you. The pride of the gate. No, well. They won't see me coming. You got this. You can do this. I believe in you, bud. Not a peep. I believe in you. 
Nice. I think this is the first time I've ever go everybody across here. What comes now? What to do? Without alerting everything. Okay. Look at us. Group up. With haste. So I'm gonna be doing this cave twice because there's kind of like this first area and then there's like a deeper part of the cave. Oh, where is that noise? Why does it sound like there's one? Is it you? Ah, oh, they're of level three. Okay. Where are the actual spiders? I'm not seeing them yet. I'm just seeing this guy. But yeah, I'm. Oh, there's this. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm already getting the heebie-jeebies. <laughs> I do not like this. Face spiders is what they're called. This guy's an. I don't know an eight cat. Just split ease up. Am I taking a risk by having Shadow Heart as level two spell slots? I'm gonna bring you here. Oh, yeah. Shouldn't have wished to live in more interesting times. Pave my path with corpses. Build my castle with bones. I think I was essentially saying I forgot what I was talking about that I was saying something that I'm gonna be doing this cave twice. Because Oh, oh fuck off! Fuck off! <laughs> because I can't do the whole cave the new. I don't know if I'll even be able to do this fucking fight the new. I forgot about the acid. Oh fucking hell, this is so off to a terrible start. <laughs> okay, it's oh it's new baby. You got any weaknesses or resistances? You don't. Do you have resistances, giant ugly spiders? Yes. Poison. That's absolutely fair. No, 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 no. I'm not gonna get her to rage straight off the bat. I know you can't move. I guess really I should have saw that coming. <laughs> I was wanting to get up here so that I could try and dive on somewhere. It's fine. I'll deal with shit. I'll deal with it. Again. Why do you chime in every now and again, dream visitor? Okay. You're gonna Eldridge blast them. Let my enemies fall. Could have been worse. Do we hex them? Okay. Come on. We can do this. We got this. Could have been worse. Try and get out. Fucking hell, Shadowheart. Where do I go from here? That's a big jump. But we're gonna go for it. Woohoo! <laughs> See, I can leap too, you sons of fucks. Nice! I'm happy with that. Fuck you! I'm not happy with that. <laughs> okay. Just you wait, Carl likes the boat to get some revenge. Jump over the webs. On the victor's path. Okay, if I go, what is here? Toxins. Run about here. Can I do a little bit? Of yes, we can. Okay, okay, nice. Well, on you go. Can't afford to let up. And you have nothing left. 
Very little left. <laughs> I'm just gonna try and see a thing. Secret flames, okay. Time to push my luck again. Can I jump over here? Hopefully without getting caught. <gasps> yes, we can. Why, thank you. I'm just gonna make my way back over. If there's anything else actually come. See, like there's a whole this cave gets a bit deeper, so we're not doing all of that today. Fortunately, because it gets worse. <laughs> Nicely done, troops. Yeah, I think we should definitely long rest. Oh, for fuck's sake. Why are we still losing health? What are you infested with? Disease. I'm just gonna go get that myself. Oh, right, those toxins. I was like, why is everybody getting hurt? But uh, it makes sense. <laughs> what I wouldn't give for a good rest about now. Oh, don't worry, Will. We're gonna go rest, don't worry. Shadow Heart. I think I'm just gonna rest in here. We're not, as I said, I I, I don't want to deal with it because the spiders get worse, and I'm not ready to face that today. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just I'm just actually gonna long rest in here. Yes, we do wanna. Thank you. Oh, it's happening. No, interesting. Hell's fire. She's coming. Oh, <gasps> who's the stranger? <laughs> well, you've been naughty, and you know what happens when you're naughty. God damn it. Anyone but her. Why does everyone know her but me? <laughs> Cannot. I have not seen Mizora in a long time. Has Grosha got a little black eye there? I love that you see the wear and tear like uh, after a battle. Uh, I think that's a really cool feature. <laughs> Aren't you a luscious thing? <laughs> I'm quite sure both Will and Karlak disapprove of that line. <laughs> but I kind of want to go for it because I kind of do like Mizora. Like, I don't like the hold she has over Will, but as a character, as a as an actor, I can't remember her name. Tamarin? I cannot remember, but like what a job she done has been Mazora. Where do you whether you like her or hate her? It was a good it was good acting. But we're gonna say she's a luscious thing. <laughs> we might as well, I feel like Grosha would. <laughs> Even though Karlak and Will might not be the biggest fans of that. You flatterer. Oh just Will. Sorry, Why, well. if I had a warm heart, I'm sure it would be skipping. <clears throat> Call me Mizora. I'm Will's patron, the fount of his power. My pet's been unruly, and his leash needs a yank. We had a deal, Will. But Karlak's still breathing. I've taken more pleasant <laughs> shits than you, Mizora, <laughs> and at least those can be buried after. <laughs> I love That's that. no kind of talk for a lady. By the way, Karlak, Zariel sends her regards. You can shut the fuck up, Mizora. You told me! Devils only! She's a tiefling, not a monster! How precious. The little pupster's found his bark. Clause G, Section 9. Target shall be limited to the infernal, the demonic, the heartless, and the soulless. Karlak meets the criteria by virtue of having no heart. But she has the biggest heart of them all. <laughs> Who if you kill Karlak, will that get rid of you? We're not doing that. I'm sorry, Will, to put you through it, but we can't kill Karlak, especially now that they're friends. <laughs> right, so we're not going to let her harm Karlak. Unfortunately, because of that, there's not much we can do to protect Will. You're not leaving this place alive? Can you kill Mizora? 
Probably not, right? Blast at all. We're not going to we're not going to blame Will for this. Because the last thing you want to tell a stranger is, oh, well, hey, even then, he's a warlock. We should know straight off the bat that he's got a pact of some sort with someone. No? I don't know. Is that not how it works? I don't know. <laughs> We're just going to go for three and say that you better not lay a damned finger on Karlak. Because apparently we can't defend Will. So yeah, we're just going to defend Karlak instead. Don't you worry. That ship has long sailed the sticks. But a defiant pup must still pay his price. To wit. To woo. <laughs> Oil burns in the fires of Avernus. I'm sorry, The Will. lightning storms of Dis strike his flesh. His soul passes through each layer of the hells, gaining their essence and their torment. Forever changed. That's better. What the hells have you done? A promise broken, a price paid. You know the terms. Get used to the new form, pet. There's no going back. Some magic even I can't undo. Now, let's see how the frontiers fare without their precious blade. Karlak, <laughs> keep an eye on him, would you? I'll be keeping mine on you. <laughs> Her face. <laughs> oh, and Will, don't forget, our pact still stands. Ta-ta. See? They have a pact. I know there's like a lot more to that than I'm making out right now, but... <gasps> I have never saw this cave before! This is a whole new campsite! What? I didn't know the campsite was different for the spider cave. I really, really love that. Uh, for the life of me, I can't even remember if it's the same in Act Two. <laughs> but in Act One, like all the camps are different, and I really so do like that. Anyway, also, since if you're here, come and let me know what you think of Mizora. I, as a character, I think she's great, but as a uh, Will's pact owner, whatever. Essentially, I, d I don't like the hold she has over Will, but as a character, I think she's great. <laughs> okay, Shadow, have you got anything to say on the subject? Shah's blessings upon you. No. No, you do not. That's fine. Let's ask her if she still has, has the artifact then. Quite the understatement, but yes, I have it. And I'll guard it with my life. Curious, you just happen to have an item that can protect us. That is very curious. And yet you don't know what it is. That doesn't add up. <laughs> Say it costs you your life, what then? We're going to ask how she came across it. I was part of a group sent by my cloister. We were to take the artifact from the Githyanki and bring it to Baldur's Gate. No matter the cost. Though it turned out the cost was very steep. Yeah. I was the only one of the group to survive. I took the artifact and fled, only to be ensnared by mind flayers before I could finish the mission. That's all I know. That's all I need to know. Really? Wouldn't you want to know something else? Yeah, blame duty. <laughs> Spoke like a true pawn. <laughs> How can you go through all this, go to all this trouble and not understand why? Admiral conviction. Though I think I'd prefer to know what I'm getting myself into. Actually, I forgot we're a paladin, so maybe we'll go for a three and say that it's Admiral Conviction. Yeah, we're gonna go for three. That's not a luxury open to many people, us included. Mm. I have my faith to turn to instead. You should find something of your own. I'm a paladin. We have something. Oh, we can still ask that. Oh, okay, we may as well ask. I told you already. Yeah. I surrendered my memories. For the sake of the mission. Yeah, but why? Shah's <laughs> secrets must be protected. Duty demands it. Once I fulfill my mission, I can have my memories restored. Okay. 
We're gonna let the martyr drop then. <laughs> I'm telling you, Shadowheart. I don't know if I could do that. You're a lot stronger than me. I'd be asking all sorts of questions. I'd be like, but why? What? Oh, Gail! We just gave you a fucking pair of books, bro. Oh my god. Whatever. <laughs> Honestly. Okay. Now that we've figured out what we're getting, Gail. How are you doing? I can't help feeling Will got off lightly. <laughs> the wrath of the hells is second only to the wrath of the heavens. Having a devil in our camp will certainly make things interesting. Never a dull day, is that? <laughs> Definitely not in this camp. Oh wait, does he not need a magical artifact right now? Yes, he does. Okay, well then we'll come back to you then. <laughs> Just thought of something. The Blade of Frontiers in the guise of a devil. I'd remark on the irony, but I'd hate to waste the breath. Still, it took guts to defy that petty patron of his. The Blade's sting is real. Did you not just waste your breath on mentioning it? I feel like I've never heard that before. I'm just going to leave. Now we're going to talk. I'm going to talk to Astarian. I like to leave the people who have uh, actually like important things to say to last. So, Will did the right thing and it earned him a set of horns. <laughs> <laughs> Let that be a lesson to us all. Of course, that's what he takes away from all this. <laughs> Oh yeah, we can ask him about the monster hunter. Oh, we'll do that later. No, we're gonna talk to Kalak. Let's see what she got to see. Suck up, Will. I'll be honest, soldier. I'm reeling. Mm -hmm. Will hardly knows me, but he chose my life over his. He did. <sighs> Been a long time since someone stuck their neck out for me like that. Oh, she's. <laughs> <laughs> he's a good man well in this camp he may actually be the best of us other than Karlak because she's like got the purest heart of them all but so as well uh, you must be relieved and between one and two we're just gonna say you must be relieved gobsmacked really <laughs> but grateful really grateful I could learn a thing or two from a man like that Hopefully we won't turn into mind flayers first. Hopefully, yeah. Isn't she just so cute? She sees the good in everything. Okay, well, how are you doing now that you've been permanently changed? God's damn her straight back to the hells. Just look at me. I did what was right, and Mazora made me pay for it. I'd be hunting devils and demons, she said. Traitors and hypocrites, heartless evils of all sorts, but not... Not Zariel's victims. Not innocent tieflings. Oh fuck. I can't believe we failed that. I don't even remember what that's supposed to tell us. <laughs> I feel like I wouldn't trust a devil, but again, the reason why he got into a pact in the first place... Well, it was important, so... He felt he'd had no choice. And none of these answers are good. Honestly, like, see, this is what I mean. The way you deal with Will's story. Like, yes, he lied to you, but literally most of your companions lie to you at some point and you don't get to shit on them as much as you get to shit on Will. Like, surely there's a nice way to say, oh, maybe you shouldn't have trusted her. <laughs> I'm, I think I'm just going to go with two that he has some explaining to do because I honestly think it's the lesser of all these evils. Yeah, we're going for two. Either way, none of them are good replies. Or not how I would have replied anyway. I'll say what I can, but it won't be enough. It's Mazora who grants me the power to conjure armor and cast eldritch blasts. Before I was infected, I could even call hell beasts and summon festering clouds but I promise you, every thrust of my blade and every flame I sparked was for the good of the coast. What did... what got cut out there? Oh, nothing. It felt like there was a piece missing. 
That would have been cool if you could summon hellhounds or something. Like, come on, just allow my help. <laughs> what is the terms of your pact? You should get out. You should. Can we ask how he got involved with Mazora and still tell him he should get out of the pact? Because I kind of want to ask that. Yeah, I'm going to go for it. Ah, the one little question that put me out of house and home. I can't utter the terms or circumstances of the pact. I can tell you most all else, but the pact, I'm forbidden, unless Mazora permits it. But I'll say this, the moment I pacted myself to Mazora, I have not regretted for a heartbeat. It was my proudest deed. It was worth the sacrifice. All I can give you on that is my solemn word. Okay, we can't go back to that, but I'm quite sure we can tell him that he should get with the pact. Anyway. Well, there you have it. Anything of use? It just tells you not to mess with Mazora. Or devils in general. But he won't explain it to you in the playthrough, but I will. Or I'll try to remember to do so, at least. Now, time for us to sleep. Hmm. I forgot about this. Come. There are important there you go. matters to discuss. And there's so many more things. Well, something's happening now. Wait, what? Why are we getting another visitor for the Guardian? We just saw you. I promised I'd be back. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. I have things under control. For now. <laughs> Not convinced. You haven't been using the parasite's power. You think you don't need it. But things haven't gone as you expected. You hoped a druid as powerful as Halsin might be able to remove your tadpole. But he couldn't. You're desperate to be rid of it. Understandable. But you're looking for solutions in the wrong places. How do you know? Huh? Kidding, they're practically with us every step of the way. <laughs> hmm, there must be a way to get rid of the tadpoles. Hmm, maybe we'll mention the modified magic that Halsin was talking about. Yeah, we're gonna say that. Yes. Halsin is correct. But how do you know? <laughs> Your parasite is unusual. It is wrapped in magic that prevents its removal. Until the source of the tadpole's magic is destroyed, any attempt to remove it will kill you. Oh, that's great. <laughs> you were lucky that Halsin knew this. His instincts are right. The parasites are merely a symptom of a greater sickness in Faerun. What kind of sickness? Yeah, how do we destroy the source? How do you know so much? Yeah, I kind of want to ask that. Oh, but I also kind of want to know what the sickness is. But I think we're going to ask how she knows so much about the tadpoles. Because she seems to know a lot. I have kept a careful watch on the movements of the cult. Though the Absolute's aims are not yet clear to me, its methods are. These parasites are more than a lithid spawn. They are vessels for control. The infected hear the voice of the Absolute and believe it to be a god. Yeah. You witnessed it yourself with Priestess Gut. That is how the cult of the Absolute is spreading. The highest of their rank, the True Souls, carry a tadpole just like yours. It is how they receive their orders. It is what makes them obey. When the order to transform is given, it will not be a matter of days. They will be Mind Flayers in an instant. Okay, that's not good to know. Were it not for my protection, so would you. Thank you, I guess, right? <laughs> Why are you protecting me? How is it you protect me? So who are you? Why should I believe you? Interesting. Do we ask who they are? Do we believe their answers? Yeah, I think we're just gonna ask who they are. See what they say. It's complicated. <laughs> but I'm an adventurer. Just like you. That's what they always say. Just like <laughs> you. I was infected with a mind flayer parasite. Just like you, I seek to be free of it. I've been trying to escape from this evil for a long time. Once, 
I almost succeeded. Now, through you, I've been given a new chance. You can go where I cannot, and I can protect you from that evil. If we work together, we may turn this around. Health. They need me. I have to go. Who? Who is they? What is going on? I'm just going to ask if we can help. Because we're not going to get much more out of you since we have to go, right? No. I can handle this. For now. The power I use to protect you, I stole it from someone. They want it back. I will hold them off for as long as I can, but sooner or later I will be worn down. You must discover the source of the magic that controls the parasites before that happens. Mm -hmm. The cultists are gathering at Moonrise Towers. Oh, I'm aware. Use the powers your parasite gives you to convince them you are one of them. And when you find the source of their magic, destroy it. Go. Our freedom depends on it. It's a bit of a big request, though. <laughs> to just take down the absolute. Destroy the magic. <laughs> you know, it's not as simple as just saying that, right? Make haste. What else? <gasps> Scratch! Scratch! Weathers, I swear, Dune, I am so sick of you saying that line. But your lucky scratch is here to make me a lot happier. <laughs> Hi, buddy! How you do? Again, if we could actually talk to him, we could like talk to him about his his dead friend. <laughs> they approve. Does everyone not normally approve? <laughs> I love that, like, no matter who you make as a character, their biggest smile is when they're patting scratch. We get to double pet. Yeah, we do. <laughs> I've heard a lot of people think scratch is annoying as fuck. Because, like, every so often he'll bring you things. But it's like, just don't fucking click on him. <laughs> you know, if you think he's that annoying, don't recruit him. I love having a little four-legged friend kicking about camp. Okay, so I feel like not a lot has happened in today's episode. No helping it. We're exposed now. But I thought I would come have a little conversation with this man right here. Just to end the episode and get some things done. So, Diamond, hello. How you doing? Thought I sensed an infernal around here. But you aren't from Elturel. What's your story? I spent a good bit of time in the hells. Enlisted against my will by the Archdevil Zariel. Same as you, I suppose, if you're from Elturel. The devils were delighted when your city was swallowed up. I thought they had you for keeps. Glad you got out. No. I got lucky. It looks like you did too. And you brought some infernal machinery with you. A little gift from Zariel. Keeps me burning hot. Very hot by the smell of it. Might be burning out a piston ring or leaking oil. Mind if I take a listen? Be my guest. But don't get too close or your eyes will melt shut. <clears throat> <laughs> Phew! You really are burning up. Whoever put that engine together tried to house metallurgized demono valves inside a Ragnax alloy casement. Ah. Very risky. I was going to say. I that. might be able to help, but I'd need infernal iron and a prayer that my hammer will survive the work. That thing isn't meant to operate outside of Vernus. Oh. I'm not sure how much longer it'll keep running the way it's going. What do you mean? Will you be able to turn down the temperature a little? Worried I'm gonna go in for a handshake and singe someone's arm off one of these days. No. I'd worry about surviving the night first. What? But help one, help both. If we can cool you off, it'll stabilize your engine and allow you to touch whomever you please. Mm hmm. Hey, soldier. 
I think we picked up some of that infernal iron already. Yes, we did. What say you? Should I give it to him? Why would you ask me? Just fucking do it, no? Fucking get your, get your, get your bloody heart fixed. Or repaired slightly. <laughs> it's not worth anything. But, yeah, we're, gonna, we're just gonna say, yeah! Of course! Please let this work. Why would we not try mm. and help? The weight of it. And that blaze of chaos. Can't imagine this where my heart should be. Must be quite the experience. Give me just a moment. <clears throat> I kind of think maybe I should have spoken to Karlek more before doing this. And I think... I'm really slacking on talking to people, I think. I feel. <laughs> there. You'll have to install it, I'm afraid. I don't think there are thick enough gloves in all the realms to protect from that kind of heat. How is she okay to be without a heart for the, like... A period of time. That feels good. <laughs> I'm still burning hot as hell's hole, but I feel less <laughs> changeable. Cheers, mate. Pleasure. And as for the heat, I haven't got any solutions now, but I'm not giving up. Oh. Could be if the combustion chamber had its own insulation, or if we had some kind of enchanted coolant. Find me again in Baldur's Gate. If I'm worth my salt, I'll have figured something out by then. Take care, Karlak. Yeah. And hopefully the next time I see you, I'll have something promising to report. Pocket any infernal iron you find along the way, hmm? Yeah. We're totally gonna do that. <laughs> Unfortunately, we're not going to do that because we're not going to have Karlik the whole time. And my heart breaks. <laughs> but, my, but, you know what, actually, I'm not going to end the video here because it's way too loud. But, it's a bit quieter up here, so I'm going to leave it there. Again, I feel like maybe not a lot happened in the episode, but like, honestly, again, there's just a lot of lore and story to go through. We've still, I'm, I'm thinking about in one of the episodes, I'm just going to do a couple of long rests in a row. Because honestly, there's still so much we have not saw in the long rests. So I'm thinking about doing that, but that's not a problem for now, because right now, I'm just going to leave today's episode there. So we helped Karlak get her first upgrade, as you just saw. We're going to be talking to her next week about that. We saw the consequences of Karlak still being alive and well paid those consequences, unfortunately. And now he has horns. I don't think he just got changed like into a tiefling. I think he's like an actual devil. I don't know the ins and outs of that. Or I'm not 100% on the ins and outs of it. But he's been changed and we'll be talking to him at some point about his changes, of course. But come and let me know what you think of Will's horns. Do you think he deserved the punish punishment he got or do you think he... Mizora was a bit rough, eh, over the top. And would you have sacrificed Karlak to save Will? Come and let me know how you would have dealt with the whole situation or do you just let Will get the horns? And also, come and let me think. Come and let me know what you think of Mizora whilst you're here. You might as well. And we also dealt with the whole Aunt Elfo thing. We got to see the swamp. I totally, honestly, part of me is like totally blanking on what we've done. We've done the spider cave. I forgot about that too. <laughs> we had to fight horrible giant spiders. <laughs> anyway, troops. Hopefully next week we'll be getting into some more scraps and we'll finding out more about our companions. Maybe going for a couple of long rests. You're just going to have to come and find out for yourselves what we're doing in the next episode, Trips. So until then, whatever you are, day or night, I hope you're having a good one. And I hope you're staying as safe and as clean as you can. And until the next time on Baldur's Gate 3, Trips, Thumbs! And my little ragtag of minions. <laughs> well, we're all... <sighs>